This week's video is going to be slightly different. I had a subscriber write to me and ask to see our books and to hear what our thoughts were about each of them. So today I'm bringing a Mark, my husband, to go through all of our bookshelf and describe the different books and what we've learned from them. Yeah, so for some people they might be wondering what's Mark doing in the studio, but for those of you who are monthly subscribers, you'll know that Sam and I do the monthly question and answer session together and it's more an off the cuff type format like this so we will there there are a lot of books in this room like a crazy amount there's maybe a thousand all around us here so we're only talking about the ones behind us I think that's that's all we'll have time to do yeah and we probably won't be able to talk about all of them but uh let's uh let's get into it so probably what start with terrain therapy yeah so obviously this book terrain therapy that was a very important book and it came from Dr. Elric Williams. It was originally, we've got the one that I found in a Wellington bookstore um, called Hints on Healthy Living and it's the fourth edition of Dr. Elric Williams' book about how to be healthy and when we found it, it was one of those unbelievably fortuitous events where he'd been dead for just 50 years and people had been requesting to to get a copy of this book if we could make it into a book and Mark helped me <laughs> well I mean firstly it was the only copy we could find yeah. at, in New Zealand at the time and uh, we thought okay well we better get it straight away and it was so good that we thought this is a real shame that it's been out of print for so long and the the best thing we thought we could do would be to republish it basically as terrain therapy with um, some additions and Sam wrote a foreword for it, etc. And there were, we didn't have to make too many changes to the book. It was it was still a lot of work getting it ready for publication because it was really just reorganizing the book as well because the layout wasn't great in the original version. No, but I think with terrain therapy it's got so many just pearls of wisdom in this book that I still go back to even now after having read it a lot of times to just uh, consolidate my thinking because I feel like this has been a real journey with health uh, since 2020 of unraveling a lot of the allopathic dogma that I had in my mind and Ulrich has this amazing way of just being he's really punchy and just gets to the point and but also from a spiritual sense I found it uh, really affirming yeah Talk, talking about allopathic dogma there are some books down below here which you can never see <laughs> and there's a there's a bit of a reason for that but these are some of the textbooks that Sam and I had when we were at medical school uh for instance, there's Rudolph's Pediatrics down there. It was funny because a couple of years ago, but well, basically in 2020, when we made this paradigm shift, and I'd been out of medicine since 2016 at that stage, so I'd got rid of a lot of my old stuff, but we still had all these textbooks in the house, and in 2020, Sam was like, I want to get rid of them. <laughs> we got to throw these out. <laughs> and, and I said, no, 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 I think you have to keep this stuff for uh, posterity and to show future generations what they used to say was factual mm. and how they used to train doctors and I think what's striking to us now is when we look at the textbooks is that we just say well what's the reference for this exactly there's there's no references they just make these statements and and you and you accept it that, well, yeah. there's, there's nothing there's no citations no or they will say they'll talk about some disease entity whether it's measles or chicken pox or whatever and they'll just make a statement and they might put a reference in there to an original paper and say that was when they proved it was a virus and it was contagious but nowadays of course and those of you who watch our content will know we never accept that kind of face value evidence and we actually look at those papers and find that often they don't show what the claim is but yeah the the textbook it's a real shame because I, I mean some of the textbooks are quite beautiful in terms of they're know, laid out and one of my favorites is actually the anatomy books like netters i mm. really like and i wanted to keep the pathology books and yeah, physiology it's just oh uh, histology <laughs> i mean although i have to say when when we did histology and we were looking down microscopes 
and they were saying to us, yeah, well, this is the liver tissue and this is what it's doing and this is the lung tissue and this is what it's doing. Yeah. Half the time, I mean, really? <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, obviously Harold Hillman has blown all this stuff out of the water previously mm-hmm. when he said, you know, these the slides themselves, you've got all this artifact, what you're looking at doesn't necessarily represent living tissue, etc. Yeah. And I was kind of pleased because some of the things I had this real instinct for at medical school that something was totally wrong one was histology mm. and I actually I didn't even bother after a while learning it and we had uh what was it uh Wheater's functional histology yeah do you remember that yes no. oh my gosh yeah I just got that book and got rid of it because I thought <laughs> I'm not even learning this stuff and you could remember the name that's in prison yeah I'm pretty sure it was that and yeah you could honestly just miss entire sections yeah. and uh, of medical school and still pass. And <laughs> that's what I elected to do. I never wasted my time with things like histology. And I'm pleased because nowadays I would look at it and say it's, it's a point bit of a, a fraud. Yeah, it's a po- point and declare exercise like virology. So this is amazing, this one. So this is Who is the Government? The Great Deception by Ewan Campbell. Now, Ewan is, he's become a friend of ours, amazing guy. He's a New Zealander. Yep. The New Zealand government made the mistake of putting him in jail once uh, for a crime he didn't commit. Yeah. And uh, to, to make it sound like a TV show there. But in any case, no, Ewan's the real deal. He, while he was incarcerated, he learned everything he could about the legal system, the difference between what's lawful, what legislation is, etc., and the amount of research he's done into exposing why governments like the New Zealand government are just corporations, essentially, that uh, you don't need to contract with. But not only, this doesn't just apply to New Zealand. I mean, this is virtually every country yeah. around the world. So uh, Ewan started helping us a couple of years ago when the authorities were trying to come after us. And Ewan's helped many other... Oh, he, he's the most selfless human being in... I mean, I should say, too, about what happened to him. The reason he was put into jail was because he was he was a, originally a farmer and was helping other farmers with the soil health and realised that you could use basically a chemical f- form of electroculture to improve the soil. And, of course, this went against big agriculture. Yeah. And like all farming nations, New Zealand has big agriculture where we have uh, chemical manufacturers of you know phosphate based fertilizers etc and of course they were not happy with what Ewan was doing and he became incredibly popular and sought after and basically they went after him and created essentially a a fraudulent charge because they tried they took everything away from him yeah yeah and then they did their usual trick which we know which is to come up with some ridiculous fine that people can't pay and you know if they can't pay it put them in jail or something similar so but anyway we will put up the link for who is the government yeah and and equity Equity and and trust um, dot tv is it Yeah. yeah yeah this is particularly relevant for people in new zealand but also people outside new zealand as well like there's a there's an excellent section in that book about the United States. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and the, it's just so fascinating, the history, to understand, and he goes into it in a lot of detail, um, just about how these things, how it all happened, because, and, and I have to take my hat off to him for getting down into the weeds of this, because it's very complicated, but it, it helps understand the bigger picture of what, what's going on, and, and I found that book, actually is excellent yeah and here in New Zealand we we call it equity the the principles of equity in other countries they've got different names for it like Mm. the sovereign movement or uh, various freedom organizations and stuff but it's all very similar around the world and this is what people are starting to understand is that this uh, there's a big fictional uh, scenario that's been presented to the public and people are basically going along with it because they think they have to. Exactly. They think they have to listen to the police and the government and they're told what to do when, in fact, yeah. you don't a lot of the time. <laughs> and, and what I love, you'll see this, the themes of our bookshelf <laughs> really describe us in a way because, yeah, Ewan is, is such a wonderful person and he also, his principles, we really strongly believe in so um should we get into yeah well well, that leads us into of course human action um behind sam there 
and a lot of people have noticed that we actually put it up i think over a year ago maybe yeah. longer and it's been sitting there for a long time now human action is if there are five books that have changed my life human action was one of them and this was a phase we went through it would have been just after the financial meltdown so 2008 we we're talking about 2008 and i started asking questions to my economist friends who had trained uh, apparently in uh, economics i never did it and neither did you we, we didn't do it we did you know we sciences and medicine yeah, yeah the the um so-called natural sciences etc mm -hmm. and we did some mathematics, but we neither of us ever did economics, so I had no background training in it. And then we witnessed the financial crisis, and we started talking to people who were supposedly experts, and they seemed to have no idea. That this was happening, or why it happened. And... No, they didn't really get it. And yeah. um, I said, oh, there must be a, a really good reason for it. And then I started asking about, well, what what book would you read about economics? And mm. people said, well, what do you mean? Do you mean like currency trading, um, equities? What are you talking about? No, I said the principles of economics. And people were giving me blank looks saying, well, you can't just read one book. <laughs> and, Apparently anyway, you can. <laughs> but what I actually read, it was a bit of a roundabout um, way it got there because I read Taleb. Yeah, it was, was Black Swan. Yeah, the Black Swan, um, you know, by Nassim Taleb and he was writing about the financial crisis and he mentioned um, you know guys like Karl Popper and stuff so I read Karl Popper's work which led me to um, Friedrich Hayek which led me to the Austrian school of economics you know of which Hayek was a part and then of course straight from there I found out about Mises and read so the first one of the first books I read on economics actually was Human Action and I don't know if you remember when I was reading it, but in the first hundred pages, <laughs> I, do, yeah. I said to Sam, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to buy another book because I'd read five or ten pages. And you needed to all this backfill to understand what he was saying. He just assumed that you knew about the history of Western philosophy, um, about Greek history, etc. So I ended up buying all these books and Sam was saying, you know, um, <laughs> you, you said it must What's be a going on, yeah. yeah. But you thought it must be a great book because yeah. I'm, I'm just talking non-stop about it. Yeah, he was. And, was. and ordering books like There's No Tomorrow. So yes. the first, the book's about 900 pages and the yeah. first 100 pages I had to order four or five books just yeah. to fully understand what he was talking about. And and it was a, a real revelation because, I mean, Sam and I were trained basically with empiricism, you know, the, the scientific method, in which you've seen us talk about a lot in the videos, that, you know, you have to make hypotheses and then observations, etc., to see if that um, comports with your hypothesis, and then try and come up with these theories, etc., and... Uh, so, you know, in the tradition of David Hume, etc. But then the Austrian school uh, really woke us up to, you know, Kantian philosophy and the fact that you could make these a priori synthetic propositions, that you could, um, you know, it was more like a logical pursuit. You could find these self-evident axioms to then explain what you saw. And... Um, you know, people would say, oh, this, that's some sort of form of idealism or something. And the, the Austrians and, and Mises and, you know, the, the people that came after Mises, like we've also got, um, uh, who else is back there? So, oh, Hans, Hans Hermann Hopper, the, um, one of his books is back there, but we've read lots of his books too. And the, you know, the Austrians that followed Mises basically pointed out that it's not a form of idealism. You can actually, this is a... A pursuit in which you can use pure logic to come to an understanding, mm -hmm. and in particular of human action or or what they call praxeology. So, and um, and Samson, you've never read Human Action, and but you know all about it because I <laughs> well, I talked about it so much, so much yeah. that um, that you started applying praxeology. Yeah, well, I can I have to say I've always done this where I, Mark's tended to be the a, a bigger reader than I am, and he'll talk about these things and I end up learning about it just because of him talking about it and ask questions and I think but I mean von Mises was just such a brilliant man and most people that we've spoken to when Mark says that that was the first book he read <laughs> 
are just shocked because the it's first so book, the first economics book, economics yeah. books. Sorry, right. it's just it's a very heavy read, and I don't think anyone would recommend to read that first. But it was something you like to do trial by fire. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and if if it is, I totally still recommend Human Action and uh, understanding praxeology or the the logical uh, science of human action. But you can go to the Mises Institute, Mises.org, and there's uh, so many resources there that you can uh, tap into. And, you know, there are summaries of of human action. Guys like Tom Woods and that um, talk about the stuff make it really easy to understand that's a a big one on the bookshelf yeah. and uh the the thing is there's actually over there which is out of shot that's my workstation over there there's about 50 books on austrian economics and of course there's lou rockwell mark thornton rothbard jo- rothbard joe saluno etc so all of these uh great scholars and Sam actually took me to the Mises Institute in 2016 which some of you will be aware of and made some great friends there including meeting Lou Rockwell which was really special and now we've got friends like Michael McKay who is also associated with the Mises Institute and I I believe Michael's books back here we got one of them there that this one secrets about money is um has been awesome for our boys, our our young boys, to start understanding about the fraud of the monetary system and how how to learn about wealth and that sort of stuff. And, um, yeah, we always say Michael's amazing. He's written quite a few short books. But more importantly to us, Michael does the index for our question and answers and has put that together over the years. So that's been awesome and yeah. we always we always give michael a bit of a shout out so on that same theme do you think we should talk about this the man versus state yeah well man versus state's a much older book by herbert spencer again uh the libertarian uh, type stuff so that um continues those themes well there's another one there by titus Gebel, uh free private cities and titus is a real he's a real mover and shaker he was living in Germany but moved to Monaco. I'm not sure if he's still there now. I, I talked to him in 2020 just as the lockdown was happening. Yeah. And Sam and I were trying to work out was there anywhere in the world which wasn't doing crazy lockstep. Because I think everybody at that same time was looking at maybe you can get away from this, maybe you can escape it. And I know that it was something that we crossed our, crossed our minds as well mm. is because New Zealand was crazy just like – Canada and so many other places um, but in the end we kind of realized that the whole world had gone completely bonkers <laughs> yeah well I talked to Titus previously a couple of times and I thought I'll send him a message to see what's happening in Monaco and yeah. I thought maybe because Mo- Sam and I we, we had looked at Monaco and um, we realized that we had to sell up um, everything we had in New Zealand to get an apartment in Monaco. <laughs> it is so expensive it's there, yeah. it's crazy. But uh, anyway, Tita said no, Monaco was not that great. They mm-hmm. had lockdowns and restrictions and it wasn't that great. But anyway, Tita's book is really interesting. It's about a, in the tradition of um, anarcho capitalism and libertarianism, it's about models where you could set up cities completely outside the jurisdiction of uh, compulsory government, essentially, and enter into arrangement with, um, you know, voluntary governance instead of government. But um, obviously governments do not like this kind of stuff going on. And I think there, I mean, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of these societies forming now, people looking to break away, either by staying within the geographical area that a current country claims to have a compulsory monopoly over or looking for territories which um you know like islands and that which may be uh, able to set up completely uh, fresh nations if you like without the compulsory monopoly on violence from this entity that we call government so yeah there's i mean yeah, you guys have probably guessed that we're pretty much... We're, we've been in the freedom community for a long time. And yeah. so it was only natural in 2020, I guess, that we went, boom, straight into the medical freedom community. As well, yeah. Mm. And the next one, I think that's a really important book, um, was Dissolving Illusions um, by Roman Bistrianic and Suzanne Humphreys. In this book, we read <laughs> an interesting story with this one because um, I... 
had been emailing Roman, uh, the co-author, and I didn't realise who he was. <laughs> and until he wrote in an email and said, um, oh, I've written this book, and he didn't even name it, and I clicked on the link that it had, and it went to this Amazon review of Dissolving Illusions, and it had all these reviews, and I was so shocked because Roman is one of the most humble people, and he never let on that who he was or what he'd done but this book is just incredible I always um, I've actually done a recent interview with Roman um, and I'll link it in the description it's a really important book I think to read for people that are new to this new to the understanding maybe something bad's happened to them with vaccines or they're just having questions about vaccines and understanding that there's no relationship between the history of vaccines being given and the subsidence of infectious diseases so um, infectious diseases in quotes, in quotes uh, yeah <laughs> and Roman was um, incredible uh, in how he basically went out to the libraries and just got all the raw data and put it together put these charts together um, and now is just referenced all over the world and it's it's one I think it's a really good introductory book to friends and family that are just new to this and because sometimes it can feel, I think, really overwhelming with the amount of information that you often get to. Um, but it's just a, a very well-referenced book, and I'd, you know, totally suggest that you, you have a look at it if you haven't. And speaking of uh, Susan Humphreys... <laughs> we have another her book. Rising from the Dead, um, Susan's book. Now, I mean, some of you will be aware that... Uh, Susan Humphreys is not particularly charitable about the no virus position and that doesn't bother us too much because I mean we, we value like the contribution she's made with dissolving illusions and blowing apart the you know safety record of vaccines etc and so we still have um, you know books by authors where we're not in alignment with their position 100% of course because we still learn from them definitely and, um, yeah, you can see, Susan, we've got your books here, so <laughs> maybe, maybe you'll read some of ours someday yeah. and uh, warm up to the no-virus position a little more. But, uh, yeah, and speaking of that, um, Peter Gotchi. Uh, I mean, this is this is a fantastic book as well, and <laughs> shall we say about... So th this is Deadly Medicines and Organised Crime, and... Um, it's, again, I think this is such a game changer. It is. It's an amazing book. When, I think it was written in... 20, 2016? Yeah, 2016. Um, so this book... 2013. Sorry. Sorry, yep. It was written in 2013. This book is really important to understand about how drugs are kind of created and how these big pharma companies can continually commit fraud and just pay out all this money as part of business. So they essentially, he puts it, that the big pharma themselves, part of their, their money that they get is just the dirty money of paying out problems, that they um, killing people and the destruction of the, the path that they leave behind. Yeah, yeah, and I think Peter like looks at things from the mainstream perspective of he's, you know, coming in from accepting germ theory and traditional pharmacology and all that kind of stuff and traditional allopathic medicine if you like and he still comes to the conclusion that 95% of pharmaceuticals shouldn't be taken that's on their own terms this is not even uh, allowing for the fact you know like we have looked into and think that germ theory is not valid that the entire uh, you know, pharmacological models uh, are not valid either. Mm. But anyway, um, that was an interesting find. But uh, we, we've only had a very brief um, <laughs> interaction with, with Peter Gotche, and it was initially positive because Sam made a video, Safe and Effective, then and now, which was really well received. And Peter liked it as well because it featured some of his um, work. But then Peter looked you up on Google. <laughs> and he didn't like that I was a co-author for Virus Mania. But anyway, I think regardless of that, I still, like Mark said, we take, we are big into just learning and we take the good from people and we discard the rest. It, it doesn't matter to us. We just want to get closer to what we see as, I guess, as close as we can to the truth. 
and um, I still even despite what happened with Peter in the emails I still think that Deadly Medicines is a fantastic book and uh, it's worth uh, the read. Peter came from the Cochrane collaboration which was a very famous research organisation and was basically ousted I think in about 2018 because he Yeah started. around the time the Gates Foundation started funding them and um, you know there was a bit of a shift there in terms of what they were allowed to say and I think it used to be pretty good the Cochrane collaboration and we used to trust it to even these days you can use it particularly if they say something along the lines of there's no evidence that this vaccine is useful and further clinical trials are needed, you know that if they are saying that, they have looked hard to try and find any mm. possible way to put it to in frame a it. positive light. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, stuff out of the Cochrane collaboration still can be useful, but I think in the last five years it's definitely gone downhill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, much like Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> You, you may wonder, you see what's behind us, but you're thinking, what's what's up there? What's above that shelf? And interestingly, I have some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's This is all little Easter eggs of what we keep on the top shelf. In our household, we love Lego, especially the boys, of course. And I was at the shop uh, a while back, and the kids were saying, could we get a Lego set? And I said, oh... Yeah, I suppose mum wouldn't mind if we got something that she likes too. <laughs> so I said, what about the Seinfeld set? Because Sam and I have been huge fans of Seinfeld and you'll know that if you watch the videos that there's always Seinfeld clips in there uh, making light of the situation. And frankly, it sounds made up. And anyway, so we um, we got that. Was it for... Uh, I can't even remember. It was my remember. birthday. Was it for your birthday? <laughs> And so it had to, we, we needed to find somewhere to put it, and I actually, I love it. So it sits on top of my shelf, and it's got a wee stand-up Jerry and all the characters, and yeah, that's my little, my little excitement. And well, I think Susie um, Lannister's there as well from Game of Thrones. She's snuck <laughs> she was, up there as she well. She was put up there by one of my boys <laughs> yeah. to add to the, to the list, yeah. So yeah, that's that's what's above, and um, I think also above that there's your Harry Potter collection, and uh, yeah, just might some be, other random that stuff. might be a good set of Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, it's out <laughs> not, of reach. Not the reading set. It's that's why it's so far out of reach from the kids. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, and then of course I can't not talk about um, obviously Virus Mania. This well, hang on. There's oh. there's something even better, which is the original version. Oh yes, yeah. Because yeah, there's, we've got heaps of versions here. Um, I've got them in all different languages. And <laughs> since, since you've been a co-author, yeah. But this is the original 2007 edition. So this is the very one that arrived in our household in early 2020, and this is this was the introduction of no virus to the Bailey household and. Uh, I read this book in two days. I was just totally absolutely blown away. Oh, absolutely blown away! I mean, and yes. I was checking the references. It was so well referenced, and I checked them a lot of them myself. And I said, "Look, I think this is the real deal." And that's when I said to you, "I think viruses don't exist." <laughs> well, even I think before that, while you were reading it, I remember Mark would sit me down and just read passages, particularly out of about the HIV about the Rosenau experiments with Spanish flu, just he would he'd say, just Sam, stop, sit down, and can I just, I just want to read something to you. And, and you did that a lot of times, or about polio, and it was just, and I thought, I've got to read this book. I, it's just so incredible, and for me, I have to, and I'm being fully honest, this is before I even knew I was going to be, I had, I didn't even, I didn't know the authors at all, was, this is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. And it was something that started a cascade of change for me. I, I think for us, the big thing was what had been hidden from us in our training. For instance, we were told that things were contagious and it was just a given, basically, that uh, 
And then knowing that they tried all these transmission yeah. experiments that had failed, that was like such a shock to us. That we've been duped. Mm. That how could we not know that these original scientific experiments had been done? And also like electron microscopy. Mm. So when we were presented with the electron micrograph images of what they said were viruses when we were training as doctors, we assumed that the experiments had already been done. We mm. thought, oh, so they've showed that this is infectious and this is causing the disease and now they've got a photograph of it. We had no idea it was just a cell culture breakdown experiment and mm. they were just pointing and declaring and saying, uh, yeah, that's the virus there without any evidence whatsoever. So I think that was, yeah, that was the big shock to us. And I would say, again, for me, like Human Action, uh, in terms of, you know, the five paradigm biggest shift. books that have ever changed my life, Virus Mania yep. uh, was one of those. And the same for me. And, and I think, just for those of you that don't know, I know a lot of you will, but for me, the course, what happened was, Mark read it, I read the book, it completely changed my thinking. And a lot of, I was making YouTube videos at the time, a lot of my videos had these themes of virus mania in it. And then eventually um, my life kind of crashed about me where I uh, was investigated by the medical council, I lost my job, um, all these things happened. I had these fact check articles on AFP and I, the authors, Torsten Engelbrecht, one of the authors of Virus Mania reached out to me and emailed me and I, I was so shocked when I checked my <laughs> inbox and saw that it was from him and he said you know would you be able to do an interview with us and I immediately ran outside because Mark was over at the neighbours and I said oh, you can't believe this but Torsten Engelbrecht has just emailed me <laughs> and wants to you know wants me to interview them and it was uh, I did and as a consequence of that interview, we got on so well that Torsten asked if I'd like to be a co-author for the new edition. And I just, for me, I'm so grateful, even to this day, about what an opportunity that was and how it really opened my mind to, or in my life to so much more. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, it's, I know I always go on about <laughs> virus mania, but it is such a crucial book and for those of you that have read it will understand what I'm talking about because it helps you release yourself from fear and understanding that there's nothing there's nothing to be scared of with microbes it's hard to believe too that this original one was you know yeah. um, 300 odd pages whereas the this next one edition is about 480 I think once yeah. you got involved with is so much bigger but yeah. it felt like the 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 first edition did definitely pack a lot of punch and, yes. and everything was there that you needed to know. So, yeah, but the rest is history. Yeah. And I think, do you want to talk about... Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> the controlled demolition of the American Empire, Jeff Berwick and Charlie Robinson. Jeff is, um, probably not many people know this, but... Jeff actually alerted us to the no virus problem and because we were watching his videos because he used to talk about the financial stuff and that's why we used to follow him. So should you say, so Jeff Berwick, for those of you that don't know, he's a podcaster, anarchist, who he had a, an the, actual pod, uh, a show Yeah, he's called, known as the Dollar Vigilante. Yeah. He's got a monthly newsletter about the markets, etc. And he had a huge YouTube channel prior yeah. to... The, well, pretty big anyway, prior to COVID-19. And Jeff just knew it was a fraud straight away without having looked at virology in particular. But I remember he did a podcast prior to that and had said, this would have been late 2019. And Jeff talks about lots of different issues. And he said that HIV was a fraud. And I thought, oh... He might have made a mistake about that. I'm not quite sure what he's talking about there. But then it was an, about two weeks later, I was listening to another podcast by someone else, and they said that the virus model is fraudulent. And I thought, this is interesting, because these... I'm following Jeff, I'm following this other guy. Um, and very trustworthy people. They seem to know a lot about what's, what's going, going on, on in the world. And yeah. both have just said that viruses are fraud, or Jeff had said HIV was a fraud. I don't mm. know if he knew all viruses were fraudulent at that stage. Um, but anyway, so... Um, but do, you, do you want to say about the book itself? Like what's, yeah, Yeah, I mean, it just... It, 
essentially it, it, it exposes the illusion that um, has been created, um, particularly with the financial system, as well as these uh, staged events that go on. Like the reason, you know, it's called the controlled demolition is that these events like 9-11 and COVID, COVID and False the various events. wars that they had. Mm. These are not like spontaneous, organic happenings that just, oh my, nobody saw that coming. These are planned, staged events, basically. Mm. And so that, that's what the book's about, essentially, is saying you need to wake up to the fact that these are not natural happenings, mm. that it's all being engineered. So, Very good book. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know Jeff's getting ready for Annika Polko um, this year, which is the you know meeting in, um, in Mexico where anarchists get together, have a bit of a um, you know presentation. An exchange and of ideas. and Celebrations. Yeah. And we did get invited, but just to travel with our young family, it's a bit of a mission. It was going to be something like 36 hours on <laughs> the flights, yeah. and it was just going to be impossible. Yeah. With, with young kids and stuff, so yeah. we, we won't be there this year. But um, it would have been cool to go yeah, because totally. some um, of our friends, friends are going. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's, I think, a big sh shout out to Jeff. He's an amazing amazing guy and if otherwise if you're not familiar with him definitely follow him in on um dollar vigilante yeah yeah and, and jeff he's prepared to take a risk or two like yeah. he, he goes out there sometimes with stuff and yeah. uh it's i don't think it's important that every single thing's correct because he gets so much of it right and um you know he certainly worked out that the virus model and contagion etc is uh, fraudulent because that's a big part of his understanding and I remember another, I think it was about 2018 when I was watching one of Jeff's uh, shows when he was on YouTube and um, he would said something along the lines of, you know, that doctors are killers and you, you don't know, <laughs> and you shouldn't, and, and hospitals and are just... Still, well, I was still working at the time, yeah. Yeah, and hospitals are slaughterhouses or something. <laughs> I'd been out of medicine for two years, so I was, I was, I'd had enough of allopathic medicine, and I didn't want to do it anymore. But even you thought it was. But I thought, oh, it's a bit harsh. is Jeff being a bit harsh here? And Not now I'd fully agree. I'd say, <laughs> oh my goodness, they are. They they kill on a scale that's unbelievable, yeah. and they don't know that they're doing it. No, um, I'm not saying that, but um, yeah, it's interesting. And and I heard Jeff say recently that he had the same experience when he first. Um, you know, married his wife and c came into her family in Mexico, and they were saying, "Oh no, doctors are killers to him." And he thought that's a bit rough. You yeah, know? yeah. And and he took a couple of years to understand what they meant. Yeah. And so I'd have to hand it to Jeff again that he sort of, yeah, he was onto it. I'd agree, Jeff. The yeah, you know, doctors they they kill and and Sam, you actually made a video. Yeah, medicine, the killing fields. <laughs> to, to talk about it, the yeah. fact that. Uh, you know, we think that we have these hospitals and medical centres and uh, all, all these health practitioners and stuff, and many of them just make it worse than no. not making the... You have everything you need. I think yeah. that's the simple thing. Now, next book in the line is probably The Invisible Rainbow by Arthur Fussenberg. I was really lucky, actually, early on when I started doing my podcasts, um, my YouTube channel, I developed a lot of really amazing people that followed me and someone was so kind and they'd send me books and one was a lady called Simon Williams I hope she doesn't mind me mentioning her who uh, she sent me four books and one of them was about Dr Ulrich Williams and another was Arthur Furstenberg's book and it really is a very interesting book about the idea of sickness being caused essentially by EMF type elements and it goes into a lot more detail about things like harp and other technologies so I think it's it's a really a great book I think to understand more about how our bodies work <laughs> from an electrical perspective and I know that uh, Arthur Furstenberg has his own um, I think he's got quite a large substack channel and things to follow him on but I, I still I definitely recommend it it's a wonderful understanding and just I think it makes you reflect in your own life like from reading this sort of book it was something then we decided okay we're getting rid of wi-fi from our house and we're converting everything to wires 
because I don't think it's worth the risk. Yeah, it's um, and I think the book I found, found was really useful in, in getting you to think about the fact that we are electrical beings because, you know, we've said this before, but a lot of allopathic medicine treats the body like a chemistry set, basically, that there's just these chemical reactions going off, whereas, you know, Furstenberg understands that that can't be the case, that the electrical system is so important and we must be in tune with what happens, you know. On, on the earth. So I think, yeah, there are, I mean, some things I don't know if, um, you know, I wouldn't say everything's caused, but it's always the danger because some people read the book and say, all right, everything, everything's EMF. Everything's yeah. EMF. And you're like, well, no, that doesn't explain poisoning or <laughs> yeah. all of the other things or unhealthy psychological thoughts or all of the other, you know, unhealthy relationships. There's mm. many, many ways that you can get sick. But I think it is important to understand we are electrical beings and. You know, for us, it was one of the things, like this book probably led us to Clint Hober, to be honest. Yeah, and it really did. Hearing Clint's experiences and expertise. About grounding. And yeah. Yeah, certainly we, after that, we were like, okay, we're advocates for grounding and we do it ourselves now. Yeah. Now here's one, I know a lot about this book, <laughs> Into Upside Down Medicine. By Mark but, Gober. Yeah. Now, the reason I know a lot about this book is that I was asked to review it along with um, Dr. Andy Kaufman just before it was published. And uh, Mark's really done a great job in this book because he's clearly been paying attention to everything going on since the start of the COVID era. And in particular, he's followed closely the arguments about germ theory about terrain, about the virus model, Cox postulates, all of these things. Now, what I think is really good about Mark's book is that he's doing it as uh, an independent outsider, if you like. Mm. Now, no doubt he favours what we do. <laughs> um, and I think he's referenced about 20 of your videos. So he's definitely watched a lot of Dr. Sam, and, uh, and we won't hold that against him. Uh, and, but, yeah, Mark really gets it in terms of the problems with... Uh, germ theory yeah. and he goes through and it, what was interesting for me reading the book was just to see how much ground that not only us but others you know Tom, Andy, Mike Stone, Christine, yeah. everyone that's been Stefan Lanker of course for several decades now uh, and going back further than that getting into the HIV stuff and the problems with the existence of what they call HIV. So Mark, he's, he's paid attention to all of that and he's given a really good overview. So this book is, I would recommend it for someone who's new to this or someone who feels they want like an independent observer, like who's reporting on the situation rather than someone who they might say, well, I don't want to follow the Baileys because they've got a vested interest. This is, you know, yeah. we know that they're no virus, etc. Yeah. Um, so if you're finding someone is looking for sitting on the fence say with this kind of stuff then an end to upside down medicine's really good um, for those people i think too i mean mark's just acutely aware that allopathic medicines failed yeah and that it's being just propped up now with propaganda and deception and it's causing so much harm yeah so hence the name of the book an mm. end to upside down medicine it's yeah. saying we're doing everything wrong mm -hmm. and it's time to at least have the conversations to say things need to be changed and done differently. So, yeah, yeah so I'd, I'd thank Mark. Thank you for inviting me to review the book uh, prior to publication. That was, um, Real honor. that was an honor. Yep. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me, we've got our new book coming out soon, which has been taking a lot of time. It's very exciting though. It's coming into the final stages really. Yep. And um, so hopefully it should be ready to go within the next month or so. I saw, I saw you working on some cover designs today. Yep. I like I like the creative art side of things. So yeah. And as you'd expect with Dr. Sam, I looked at the cover and my first reaction was laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I just burst out laughing and said, that's brilliant. I was like, what is... What is going on there? We're not going to give too much away yeah, just in yeah. case we have to change it. But 
<laughs> it was like, I was like, that's that's only something you'd come up with, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Tom Gowan would. The, yeah. two, the two of you are like, you know. We're, we're, we're comedians. You, you are. Yeah. You love to make fun of things. And, uh, yeah. you know, while everyone else is losing their minds and panicking, you seem to find the, the funny side <laughs> of things. <laughs> but, but also, I think what I like about this our new book is that it's going to be, and we'll talk about it obviously again, but it's really a compendium, a companion to Virus Mania. It's all new content and it's a condensed, you know, punchy version of it. So it's it's supposed to be read kind of in conjunction with Virus Mania. Yeah, well, and it's a standalone book and yeah. we're describing it as something that you can just pop on the coffee table, you pick it up read something really interesting Share it. little yeah. um, sub chapter or two yeah it's around 200 pages and um yeah. so yeah it's about i think it'll be about 60 percent of the size of uh virus, virus mania. mania about 350 odd references so pretty heavily referenced but keeping it in as plain yeah. language as we can so Possible. yeah but i love that cover by the way yeah yeah <laughs> Well, and another book that is actually really close to my heart, um, which, okay, this is really left field, okay? <laughs> you guys are thinking this is random. So this book is called Wally's Down to Earth Gardening Guide by Wally Richards. And this book, I okay, so I love gardening. <laughs> And I've read a lot of gardening books. To the right of us, I might just try and show you a shot. We've got a lot of gardening books. And I've read through so many to try and get to the bottom of things. This is a very New Zealand specific book. Um, so if you're in New Zealand, I would highly recommend getting it. It, it, it was something that you think you know everything. <laughs> and you don't. And Wally is just, he's, I think he might be in his 80s now. But is the most inc incredible fountain of knowledge practical what to do and I found myself um walking around the house with this book <laughs> and reading it and then going what was that and reading it again and I just since we've moved to our uh, lifestyle block so a, a teenager block where we're growing a lot of our own food now um understanding he Wally totally gets about the problems with soil and the poisoning that's been going on with from big agriculture and actually does a whole section on that about why you need to grow things organically and practical things of how you do it all, which I always speaks to my heart because I, I, I think both of us are very practical people and that's what we try and convey in our own videos is how you can do things, how you can improve your life in a practical way. And this book was just the best gardening book I've ever owned. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I would say that it's actually okay for the international audience, and, and like Sam says, it is quite New Zealand specific. But I mean, a lot of gardening conditions are yep. similar around the world. So, you know, for those um, in uh, England and Europe and yeah. the United States, particularly those Australia who are, who are at similar latitudes to us, um, the book is you know is absolutely amazing. And I should also say something here about the cover. <laughs> Some I know. Look, some people in our audience are going to look at this and, and so say, what, "Freemason." What, what is that triangle on the front? What is that? Is that the eye of Horus at the top? He no. is not a Freemason. No, look, it says soil, plants, health, and you. So yeah, Wally's not interested in um, the Freemasons or numerology. He's got no much better things to do yeah. than um, you know pay attention to these dangerous yeah. cults, etc. He's a very genuine, lovely person. But he knows all of the scams. Yeah, and it's interesting to read in this book that you know well before we knew anything about yes. this. He was pointing out the problems with glyphosate, how it was devastating the soil quality. The effect with Parkinson's and all, all, all the other sorts of health issues. Yeah. He was pointing out how milk was just rubbish once they were homogenizing and pasteurizing it. Yes. He said Don't, it's, it's even worse than anything you can imagine and that you should only, if you're going to drink milk, it should be raw. So he was on to all of this stuff mm. like years ago. And the amazing, Sam was reading this book and it's like, if you look at the pages, it's, <laughs> There's no colour photos. It's, it's just It's really text. basic. So it's yeah. not the sort of thing that's going to create attention. But no. when Sam was reading it, she goes, my goodness, this is like the best gardening yes. book I've 
ever read. Yeah. And I was like skeptical because I'd seen it on the <laughs> table. Like if you looked at it, you would you're not you you'd discard it straight away and think, oh, this is no good because it doesn't look beautiful. But it is just such the content is unbelievable. In fact, Wally inspired me to get a worm farm. I don't know if any of you guys have worm farms, but I just the whole thing, I just I love it. I love how he thinks about improving the soil and how you can garden and just incorporate that in your life to make you healthy and it really appeals to me in terms of the I guess we're now really naturopaths <laughs> totally and look this book as I say I was just blown away when I started reading it I kept saying to Sam oh look at this because when we moved here we've suddenly we've got these huge areas of pasture of grass. And, and lawns yeah. just grass everywhere and I'd see a little problem spot and then think oh, I wonder if Wally knows about this and sure enough, sure enough he does. <laughs> yeah you pick up the book and you look at the all over it. <laughs> he's, he's got a solution for it and yeah. uh, and even like um you know the ways to cut your grass and stuff yeah which you, you know you think you know all this stuff and uh Wally just quietly tells you well just do it this way yeah and see how you go so not only that so in my family then my brother picks up this book and now he's raving about it my <laughs> mum's got it it's the sort of book that once you get it, uh, it's you're a yeah, convert. You, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, it's, so. it's a fantastic book. Anyone so. who's interested in anything from lawns to um, you know maintaining growing your own crops or yeah, yeah. healthy ecosystems, etc. Yeah. It's all there now. Wally had sent you a new book and he it has. hasn't arrived. I know. I was going to hopefully read it and talk about it today, but I'm, unfortunately, I it hasn't arrived yet. So. But I still would 100% recommend his, yeah. Well, why don't we, hopefully, it arrives soon, because I know it's in the mail, and we could put it up on screen, or even once the video's out, we could add it in later, because I think it's really important. Yeah. And in the meantime, uh, we'll also put the link, because Wally's on Reality Check Radio, yeah. which is a, a freedom-orientated uh, New Zealand radio network, and Wally's quite a regular... Yeah. Uh, feature on there. I think he talks with Rodney Hyde, yeah. who we know. Rodney's a great own. guy. Yeah. So yeah, that's another thing. We'll, we'll put the link for that so you can get your tips from what to do from yeah. Wally. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on, the next book is Salts and It's Skin. I can never say it properly. <laughs> the Gulag Archipelago. This book I ended up actually buying because of Jordan Peterson I, at the time I was heavily into his podcasts and work and he really talked a lot about it and I thought okay I've got to read this book and phenomenal book for those that don't know it it's talking about a, a real person who lived during the time of the Soviet era um, and what happened with the gulags and the thinking that went along with all of the uh, totalitarianism essentially and I have to say when COVID happened all I could think was this book now this book's interesting to me because I haven't read it so most books in the house I've read but um, Sam's got one here that I haven't read yeah and from memory was it a um, yeah it was I think it's yeah it's a first edition this one I think that was my role in the book <laughs> getting Sam, a first edition Sam said she wanted the book and I said that's fine but there has to be a first edition so I think this is the first um, edition from the UK and yeah but it's one I, I still haven't read it's very dark in terms of I, I struggled <laughs> to be honest to get through it um, and I had to stop for a bit because it was it's very upsetting but at the same time you need to know what's happened in history and I am grateful to have read it and it's given me a, a wonderful point of reference and also I've felt that it has connected me closer to God and to being, being a Christian really. Um, yeah. yeah. Now we have other books here as well and some of them are really old. And what's this one? This is The Natural History of Infectious Diseases by Sir McFarlane Burnett. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, this is a classic. This is, this is from my dad. And he, when he was at uh, vet school in Sydney, this was one of his textbooks. And uh, I think dad was hoping that all of this infectious disease stuff and, uh, you know, pathogenic microbes would, would brush off on me. So he gave me all of these books. And because uh, I think... 
Dad still believes in gym theory. I think that's <laughs> we've tried. But anyway, the, these books are classic, and I do. It is quite nice to look back through them sometimes because yeah. I think they were being more honest back yeah, then. Yeah, definitely. They weren't making. I mean, I think they got it wrong, but they weren't making such outrageous claims. They would say that they didn't know how things work. They'd yeah. just say, "Oh, look, we think there are these viruses, but we're not quite sure." Mm. Um, you know, and it felt. And I know. McFarlane Burnett in later years he actually thought that they'd gone over the top with, yeah. with a lot of the claims that they were making and particularly as it was creeping into molecular biology mm. which uh, as we know doesn't necessarily inform you much about how biology actually works and about how to be healthy etc mm. he was almost um, philosophizing that they'd gone down the wrong route mm. essentially despite his lifetime of you know, being known as uh, infectious disease kind of researcher and virologist, etc. So, so yeah, we've got a whole lot of books here as well, which uh, you know they were sort of published around the middle of last century, and uh, they're quite fun in terms of the old school stuff, and and also because they don't heaps of the diseases now that they try and make out are like so bad and so serious back then they're just treating them like a joke yeah like influenza but totally yeah. chicken pox middle That's of last century burger. they're just saying these are nothing these yeah. are not serious um, yeah. diseases in the world of quote infectious diseases so yeah. it's quite interesting as well how they've kind of swindled that story and now the public are led to believe oh you know influenza that's deadly got to have an influenza vaccine and one thing i really like about having these um original like um books is that you know that they can't be doctored and changed and i you can go to them and you can read them and, and they're written at that time and it it to me it's just this is actually far more accurate than the history that we keep being told so yeah mm. well thank you so much for your time and i hope you've enjoyed <laughs> seeing what's on the Bailey's bookshelf. It's been, we, we try and always create little Easter eggs for those that watch us every week and put new things up and, and make it a wee bit more interesting. Um, if you guys enjoyed that, please let us know in the comments and we can always make another video of more books that we have. <laughs> yeah, there's, as I say, there's so many books in this room and uh, we, could, uh, we could actually just spend a whole year uh, going over them like we had today but yeah this is just something a little different to start off 2024 and rest assured that we have plenty of energy to continue bringing you content as we said we've got the new book should be out soon we've got plenty of uh, ideas for videos etc yeah. and I mean you're going to see us we're pretty positive like uh, there's so much negativity out there at the moment and people are just trying to attack each other left yeah. right and center and i think there's a lot of frustration and exhaustion with everything that's been happening since 2020 but i think there's no reason to panic there's no reason to feel fear we have everything we need and i i'm really excited about what's coming for our future and especially this coming year yeah and i think so and like if uh, like we're getting a lot of people saying oh this person says that you know they've proved you wrong etc and they've written like you know, two sentences or something. <laughs> and, you know, we're not going to respond to, to things like that. I mean, if somebody offered a really good uh, argument about germ theory or or showing that viruses that it indeed exist, etc., we're, we're all ears. But we're finding it's, it's really deteriorated into some pretty poor quality stuff and we're not we're not at all tempted to be drawn down into that no. world so what we'll c concentrate on is continuing to bring information and content that and can help you i think with your own life um making it better and also i think it's i i like to focus um our energy too on on interesting on interesting ideas that one might not have come across before um especially talking with interesting uh, people across the world who have also had an influence on us so, yeah yeah so thank you for tuning in to this episode and i guess uh most of the I'll time i'll see you next time yeah yeah <laughs> unless you subscribe to our monthly content and you'll see us every month together doing yeah. questions and answers and um because we really do get through quite a lot of questions yeah um compared to what we can do and say a traditional video and it's just a bit more fun and a bit more laid back so.
So yeah, thanks and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please visit supportdrsam.com 